Hello, this is Eclipse. I'm doing a commentary on my speedrun of Super Metroid Project Base. I have a time of 34 minutes and 48 seconds. Project Base is a ROM hack of Super Metroid where you do some crazy tricks that you could not do in the base game of Super Metroid. I'm going I'm to start the video. Let's get through the run right now. So here, I have to drop down without touching any platforms in the first room. That was a success. And what I'm doing is, arm, is I am arm pumping. Arm pumping is where you spam, aim up or aim down. Samus gains one pixel in front of her. So if you're running while gaining one pixel in front of you every other frame, You'll be reaching the end of the room in a shorter amount of time. Well, you save frames because it's one pixel. It makes a difference, but it's not that big. So right now, that was Ridley who took the Metroid, and I have to get out of this area before it blows its smithereens. According to the countdown timer. So, what I'm doing is I'm ledge grabbing. I have to jump up I have to press aim up or aim down. Notice there's a theme with the aim up aim in, and aim down as I go by. So, that was the intro. So ledge grabbing is when, as I said, you jump up and when you reach a ledge, you have to press aim up or aim down. What that does is that it saves time by having you instantly land on the platform instead of like accumulating more height and then having to drop down. You also save frames. It's like arm pumping. Aiming up and aiming down. Some pretty useful moments that was definitely not intentional when making the game. So this is what it seems where the game really begins. I gotta run left and I gotta grab my first power up the morph ball. Oh, I should have hit that door. So now, drop down, hit the hatch below. Now I gotta count six platforms and go to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll move left, but I didn't move left again. Well, this is the room where I gotta land every perfect platform, which I successfully did. That was a nice elevator catch. Elevator catch is when you run to the elevator, and you have to press angle up or angle down, then press down or up, depending on where the elevator goes. So now, I got my morph ball, but that allows me to turn to a ball. Gotta shoot down, grab the missiles. That is a requirement, missiles are a requirement. Now the next room I'm gonna go into is not a requirement, but... It's a safety strat I use. You get an E-Tank, which doubles up your health. You get like about like 100 health. So, uh, up. And I gotta backtrack. Grab the bomb ability. Now, I gotta kill these uh, space pirates. Yeah, I missed that guy over there. So, coming up is a tower climb. This is my method of climbing the tower. Usually people would go to the right and just wall jump, but the left side is really easy for me to do. But I still have to kill the enemies on the left. This is the last... Yep. Now I gotta go up. This is another climb I gotta do. A little bit more challenging. Yep, I just bypassed the enemy over there. So now... This is why you need the morph ball. You need to get in there. But you also need to grab the bombs. So, this is a boss fight that's coming up? Actually, wait. No, it's not a boss fight. It's a fetch quest. Yep. 
time. So coming up is the Alcatraz escape, where I have to morph ball into that tiny spot I came from by wall jumping three times. There we go. Takes practice, but you save like eight seconds. Roughly eight seconds. So this is what I call the Terminator, where I just go down and shoot all the enemies. It was actually... It was called the Terminator room before the base game. Oh, we gotta kill this enemy? Down there. And now we're about to leave Criteria. So the Terminator room... is called the Terminator room... by some of the speedrunners. Best speedrunners of the game, because you literally look like the Terminator when you run down and shoot stuff. Effortlessly. Coming up, I need to get the early super missiles. The sequence break, but I need to turn to a morph ball right now. So I grabbed the super missiles, but what I did there was I did something called mock balling, where you turn into a ball as soon as you land to the ground. I grab these missiles right here. So normally you would need a speed booster to pass those doors just by running. But there's a technique called mock balling, where, as I've said, you have to turn to a ball as soon as you land. So this is another sequence break where I gotta grab super missiles. I just pass a crumble block by doing a backflip and turning to a ball. Use a power bombs. You're not supposed to get some power bombs before you fight the next boss that's coming up, but I did anyway. I usually use a power bomb in this area. Open that thing right there. Now, this is another example of mock ball. See how fast I'm rolling? That is a mock ball. Go now, just gotta drop it down. Grab the missiles. I also need to grab the charge beam. Yeah, I gotta clear that area because that's where I gotta go eventually. Charge beam comes very handy. It's actually required. Right the run. So, this is the room where I gotta kill specific enemies. This room goes pretty clean last time I remember. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah. You will see some sequence breaks that you would not be doing if you're play this game casually. Well, this is a cactus room coming up. I need to backflip. Land in certain spots. So I took a swim there. That's not what I wanted. But I'm still at a good pace. So that did not bother me. Now this is a spacer. I don't have to grab this. It's actually an obsolete uh, strat that I'm going to use. But it makes this game a lot easier because of another boss fight. So, Spazer, as you saw, increases the vertical range, the vertical height, the uh, shots. But these guys gotta kill super missiles. But the small enemies, the cannon fodder, can die really quickly with the Spazer beam. So this room is called the Spazer Spam, where I just keep on running and spam Spazer Beam. Spazer Spam. I gotta kill the Vinny Crane guy. That, well, it took a spot, but it's no problem. Okay, so coming up is the boss named Creed. I have to position myself right there, and I have to feed him a certain number of regular and super missiles. He needs to open up his mouth, but I cannot shoot his fingers right there. So, I gotta come up and shoot his mouth. I wasted a couple of missiles because I knew I was a little late with timing. So I just unloaded everything I had. Luckily, he gave me two super missiles to compensate for that late quick kill. It was a quick kill, but... It wasn't as quick as I wanted, by like one second or one frame. So I got the uh, Varya suit. I need that for Norfair that's coming up. If I were to go into certain places in Norfair without the Varya suit, I'll be losing health. Because the Varya suit makes you immune to like certain high temperatures. 
So coming up is the speed boost power up. This is where the game or the speed run really begins. Because you got the speed booster. You hold run and you turn blue as you run for a certain amount of distance. So really fast, obviously. So coming up is the first shine spark. Let's we'll charge up a shine spark. I preserve my speed charge uh, state. And then I let it rip horizontally. You can go horizontally or you can go upwards or diagonally. So this is a way B. This becomes very handy later. So now I gotta backflip my weight down. It's okay if I eat the spikes and the lava, as long as I hightail out there really soon. This is what I call Norfair Speedway. Because you just go fast and you gotta preserve your momentum. So this is where I gotta like press down and then preserve and then get to Shine Spark stage. So now I'm gonna grab another E tank. I gotta get out of the room. So shine to do a shine spark, you have to be running in the blue state. Then after that, you have to press down so that you can preserve your blue state while being stationary or walking normally. Then while I'm in that state, I have to press jump and then left, right, or up. So this is the ice beam that's coming up. Ice beam also comes in real handy later. Next year acquired, eat the ice beam. So now I'm backtrack and I'm gonna leave warfare. So here I'm trying to charge a shine spark. Yeah, I failed that that uh don't open the shine spark. That's a technique. That like you can you have to shoot a projectile, then shine spark immediately to catch up to it. But don't go too fast. Otherwise you'll hit the door before your projectile opens it. Alright, so there was a little bit of lag going on, I have no idea why, but it would have saved like about three seconds if my PC was behaving nice. So this is the red room shine spark. I gotta align myself perfectly and just skyrocket upwards. I had to readjust myself by moving left. I don't ever want to have to do that again. So this room, you just gotta land on this platform precisely. Another shine spark. Go up. That is, that is uh, ambiguous in placement. You position yourself. Alright, so now we're gonna enter a new zone called the Wrecked Ship. Up. I'm gonna do that, like, that Shine Spark door open uh, technique. Try to grab the missiles that's in the middle. So this this is gonna work. Yeah. This is timing. I'm about to face the boss Fantoon. Like about a minute. Fantoon has RNG patterns. Beginning. You'll do figure eights, but you don't want to do that. What you want to do is open his eye. He does that on his own accord, so I can't control that. I'm gonna face him really soon. What pattern does he give me? Does he, does he open his eye or does he dance? Alright, so he opened his eye. So that means I gotta jam all the super missiles into him. Or not the super missiles, the regular missiles. Alright, so at this point, I have to jam, uh, super missiles into him because he's almost about to be dead. There you go. He's dead. That was actually a really good fan tune. So right now, this is the Apollo Spark, where, just like the Red Room Spark, I have to position myself and Shine Spark directly upwards. So, right there. And I just go for a ride. Another shine spark. 
Yeah, Shine Sparks is something you'll be seeing a lot of. More common in Project Base than in regular Super Metroid. Because Grime has actually allowed us to take full advantage of that power up. Really love it. So, this is the part where I just sit back and relax and have that Chosen statue take me down to the gravity suit. Which allows me to go underwater. Actually, you can always go underwater, but with the gravity suit, physics behave differently when you're underwater. Well, they behave the same as if you were on land, if you have the gravity suit. But if you're in water without the gravity suit, you're pretty much on the move. It's that slow. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to refill the ship, the same ship I came into. I do this because of the next boss coming up, Dragon. One part where I feel like I have to refill the ship with the strats I'm using. So I gotta drop down, go back where I came. We're about to enter Meridian, which is a water level. So that gravity suit I was talking about earlier will be real handy. Otherwise we'll be uh, spending like... 10 centuries trying to beat the game. Alright, so this is another Shine Spark that's coming up. So, I gotta kill the fish without opening the hatch. So I can get some distance to charge a Shine Spark. Drop down. Then let it go. Then, we've entered Meridian, essentially. Alright, so I'm gonna grab missiles and super missiles. That's a missile. Grab some super missiles. And this room, I have to shine, I have to preserve shine spark, not use it yet. But I have to pass this sand fall, then let it rip right here. Shine Spark up without touching any of the platforms and ceilings. Right there. Yep. I was about to hit that ceiling, that little platform right there. Shine Spark over there. I also need to grab regular missiles. Right. So, this is a boss fight Dragon coming up. Dragon. I have to shoot like three turrets. Uh, two on the right. Oh, I missed the one on the right. There we go, he's dead. Oh my god, shoot the one on the left. Now I have to position myself right there. And this is what I call the Spray God and Pray God strat, where I just shoot all the missiles I have into Dragon. Every time he swoops. Well, not every time he swoops, but this is the one time where I gotta just jam every normal missile I got possible. So I power bomb here because I'm anticipating an attack pattern where he shoots goo at me. Gotta clear that goo out, then shoot all the missiles you got into him. There you go, now he's dead. I, just ha I had a spray and prick. So power bombs eliminates that goo. You do not want to get eaten by that goo, otherwise Dragon will grab you, and you gotta spend like a long time trying to get out of that grab hole. This is a space jump. Space jump is where you can jump for infinity. Timing is weird, but you gotta, you gotta learn it. So this is another shine spark that's gonna be up. Well, it's the same shine spark as before, just the other way around. I gotta position myself. There we go. No platforms or areas. Come on, except for that. Yeah. This is Cactus Alley. I have to shoot these guys for some super missiles. The guy gave me a regular. He'll probably give me a super. Two supers. Oh, that's nice. I want super missiles for Ridley. Oh, I misfired those two uh, 
more whistles there because I try to kill the uh the cactus up there. I thought I had uh, missiles unequipped. So I have to climb up and I need the plasma beam. Plasma beam does a great amount of damage combined it with certain other beams that I have right now. I gotta get there. Grab the plasma beam. Get out of there. I kill a few dudes for whatever they give me. Like that. I think I just leave. I'm pretty happy with the super missiles that I got. Yeah, resource management is key in this game. I have to grab a lot more than I need. Because I typically am reckless. That sort of stuff. Exit Meridia. So this part's very straightforward. Run. Kill some stuff in the way. Just let the gun run. And we're back at that one room you go to right after you kill Kraid. Same sword. Leave Red Star. And then go to the speed boost. Well, we're not going to the speed booster area anymore. Instead, we're gonna go to a little secret passage to lower Norfair. About to arrive there soon. But so just uh speed charge or science mark there. Now we're in lower Norfair. At this part, you gotta like, you gotta shoot through these enemies and not get hit yourself. If you shoot through them, well, if you shoot at those enemies and just walk through them really quickly, they won't hurt you. You have to, you have to get the right timing on those guys. You have to arrive at them at a certain time. So these guys, you just gotta go down and. I have to get hit, but I get hit anyway. So that means all I gotta do is grab the E-Tank at the bottom. There's a little stack punch where you won't space jump anymore. Straightforward, just go down, power bomb. Little line of power bombs, but I pretty much have the exact requirement to pass this room or before I fight the next boss Ridley. Yeah, I kill those guys. So, coming up are these steel pirates that are very annoying. But you gotta kill to pass this room. So, they're immune to any damage until you shoot them with a charge shot. Like that. Well, they have to turn yellow first. First, they have to turn yellow. Then, you gotta kill them with a charge shot. And then, unload what you got. Dump them to them. And there. So, wait for them to jump and turn yellow. And then, charge shot them. Alright, so this room, I do farm here for certain, uh. Things like health and super missiles, that's really what I'm looking for. Health and super missiles. Oh, I jumped in that on the pit. So I think I'm happy right here. Oh, a little bit. So I just pass the enemies. I usually farm here for another spare amount, but right now I'm gonna unload my super missiles in Ridley. And personally, I like to shoot regular missiles at him because. I cannot charge shot him every time. Alright, so he's about to die really soon. Because I unloaded like over 20 missiles into him. Usually you're supposed to charge shot like 20, 19 times into his face. But since I got no missiles left, that's what I gotta do now. So 
I'm losing health, so I have to be careful. Well, now I don't, because he's dead. Yeah, everybody, do some charm shots, but missiles gives me a guaranteed way to kill him. I have not been able to shoot him the charm shot consistently. So this is where Norfair becomes fun. Well, I'm not grabbing the grapple hook, but I call the, gra I call the grapple hook spark because it's I have to do a shine spark right here. Shine spark. There we go. So this is another shine spark I have to charge. Well, first I have to thread through that, which I failed to do until now. This is a short shine spark, but it matters. Yeah. There, then. yeah. So we're about to leave Norfair. We're good. We're not going back there ever again. What I should have done was I should have hit the speed charge to leave that area. Instead of like climbing up. So this is another area we have to revisit. Same sequence where I went to the wrecked ship. So, everything is the same until I actually leave Brent Star for good. So, that was a slow, uh, time spark. But I have the space jump, which makes this room a lot easier. This part, I don't think I got the shine spark. So, I literally have to, like, climb up there manually. Or I could just use a space jump. Yeah, I lost a little bit of time, but it's alright. So... I'm gonna go back to the ship and refill, and I'm gonna go to the golden statue. Or the golden four is what people call it. So... In Super Metroid, you have to kill four bosses. Uh, Ridley? Dragon, Raid, and Fantoon. And I actually fulfilled that requirement by now. So, you can literally kill any of those bosses in any order you want. As long as you get them all done. As long as you kill them all. Yeah. Well, there's actually a certain order that the game wants you to kill them by. Raid first and then Ridley last. But you can there are ways to kill certain enemies or certain bosses in uh you other way you want. However, it's still optimal and project based to kill trade first because you can get the speed booster early. Um uh, but the order I took was uh Fantoon, Kraid, Ridley. The optimal is Ridley, uh, Raygon. Oh, I think I messed up the order. Okay, Kraid, Ridley, Dragon, wait, no. Then Fantoon. Yeah, Fantoon. That's the optimal order. I did not take that order. The order I took, which is beginner friendly, is Kraid, Fantoon, Dragon, and Ridley. So after killing the bosses, in whatever order, you unlock this area, which is the final zone of the game. Orient. I have to kill these Metroids. Pass the door. Freeze them and shoot sup supers into them. Drop them down. Kill those two. Get to the next room. Knowing what Metroids are in each room is very important, so you know what to expect. Obviously, I could be doing this much faster, but it takes practice to do it much faster than how I do it.
Alright, so... This room is called... Baby Skip? Because that Metroid earlier in the game grows really big for some reason and wants to eat you up. Bring your health and stuff. So, I had a shine spark to get past that baby. So, this is called the Z Bike Skip. It's coming up. It's a glitch. Pass through the pillars, the red pillars, by freezing that dude and just jumping and praying to God that I get through like I did now. That, that Z Bike glitch took a little bit longer than it should have. I just gotta unload missiles into that tank while I get to fight Mother Brain. There we go. Okay, so this this fight takes practice. You just gotta keep sh shooting at Mother Brain's head in the corner without being hit by any attacks. So these blue rings are not that big of a deal, neither was that yellow, like, tiny shot there. This bomb, however, you gotta jump up. There we go. So, what I'm looking for is a red beam. Red beam does a ton of damage. One thing to know about this boss is you have to pretend you have, like, 1 HP. I'm not doing a good job of that. That's red beam right there. That red beam does like 300 damage, I think. And if you get hit by that, the run's dead. Because if you have less than like 200 health, then Mother Brain's gonna shoot a rainbow beam into you, like this one, and it drains a certain number of health. If you don't have the, if you don't have any remaining health after that rainbow beam, your run's dead. Like you, you die. Like there's no coming back. You just gotta reset the whole game itself. Oh, uh, there isn't a whole lot of talk about this part. Except wait for like two minutes or a minute and a half while the cutscene plays out. But she'll be ga she'll be gaining a hyper beam. You'll be using that to your advantage, and you just gotta sit back or Get a little close to Mother Brain and spam Hyper Beam in her face. So, we have a little uh, death scene coming up. That little Metroid decided to save us, but. to get a little close to Mother Brain, so I can end this as quickly as possible. Well, I didn't get that close. So, this is the escape. The final escape where the whole, like, place blows up. Not that big of a deal. But getting out of there fast is can be challenging if you don't know what you're doing. So I charge a shine spark there. This part can get really tricky because I end up falling down being hit by the base. This time I fell down when like jumping. Escaping this part before the time limit is not a problem to me. What is a problem is getting out of that area fast. Alright, so I failed the shine spark there. Yeah, so now I just gotta like, I'll jump my way up there. That would save me like, a second or two. So this is another shine spark that's very easy. Just gotta hug right in the wall and then go up. This, that, that shouldn't not happen. Was 
able to hit that door open quick enough. I tried to shine spark there at that closed hatch, but it's really hard to charge that shine spark in a really short distance. It's possible, but it takes practice. So this is time coming up. There we go. 34 48. Could have been better. Small mistakes. But my sum of best segments say 34 20. I can probably get there if I do everything right. Plus the RNG for Fan 2 is actually pretty decent. So you can't end the stream yet, or you can't end the, the recording until you see the in-game time of completion of the game. Because you need to see that and you need to know that. So that was 27 minutes in game time. But in real time, that was 34 or 48. So there's IGT and RTA. IGT stands for in-game timer, which was that 27 you saw. That's how the game calculates the time. In real time, RTA, real time. Real time tech is 34.48. So that's uh, how the runs usually go in Project Base. What I have to do. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you next time. I attempt to get sub 34.